Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Trogly's Guitar Show, your daily dose of guitar information. Man, do I have a special one for you guys today. I couldn't wait to get this thing in and do its full review and demo because I have wanted one of these for such a long time. So long, in fact, that you can find an old Wyron episode, number 63, where I talk all about this model. But first, wh what exactly is going on here, guys? We've got a 1P90 gold top with some freaky flower pick guard? Okay, so at heart, this is a 1954 reissue gold top. So you have the historic specs of a Les Paul gold top. You have a maple top finished in gold with the mahogany back, and you have a mahogany neck with the rosewood fretboard, standard trapezoid inlays with binding along the neck, You've got the vintage correct low Gibson logo with the Les Paul model silkscreen with the historic spec truss rod cover. And on top of that, it's a 54 because hey, a wrap tail piece with a P90 pickup with a soap bar cover over it. But w what exactly is going on here with this pick guard? Well, this design is borrowed from the ES295, which is one of the best guitars ever made. I had one of those a really long time ago. That is one that I wish I would have never let go. It was beaten and bruised, all turning green, had a crazy headstock repair, and somebody cut a big hole out of it to work on it. But man, that thing was fantastic. You could also say this kind of has a Mary Ford vibe to it because she had a PAF gold top that she had a very similar looking pick guard on and she had an armrest right here. So if you ever read in the comments, hey, that guitar needs an armrest, that's what they're talking about. But the one last 50s model mashup that this thing has is it's a Les Paul Jr. Because it's completely missing a neck pickup if you haven't noticed and take a look at this control layout. Usually the bridge pickup controls on a Les Paul would be farther down. Sometimes you'll see signature models with a single pickup, they'll have them staggered, and it just doesn't quite look right because some people are used to this for a Les Paul Jr. So you can think of this guitar as a high-end Les Paul Jr. If you've never been happy enough with a Jr. for its cosmetics, find yourself one of these because man, they are fantastic. There's been quite a few artists that have started to appreciate a single pickup guitar. People like Jared James Nichols. He's got his old glory out with this the single P90 pickup. That works for him. We recently had the Joe Perry Gold Rush Les Paul Access. Once again, single humbucker. I think Dave Amato did something very similar with a, a Floyd Rose in his. With so many people having signature one pickup guitars. Is, is this a thing? Is there something special to them? Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. I can't really explain it. I've only ever owned two of these. The other one was a Silver Burst Les Paul Custom with a single humbucker. There's something so freeing about not having this neck pickup. Some people will say that not having those magnets pulling on the strings allows them to vibrate easier. There's less pressure on them. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I'm sure there's a little bit, but I just like it because you've got so much more room to strum. Now, personally on this one, I would probably take the pick guard off despite it looking really cool because it kind of inhibits play a little bit there. But man, this, it's just beautiful, simple perfection. But I'm not done yet. It's not just a 54 gold top melded with the ES295 and Les Paul Jr. aspects. This actually has something modern to it as well. Take a look at this, the access heel joint. You have all the 50s flair with modern playability here. It still has that huge chunky neck on it, but now you don't have the clunky pointy heel. So now that we understand the specs of this beauty, now it's time for me to blow your mind even further. This is not a production run guitar. It's not something that was custom ordered. It's actually a prototype. This bears no serial number except for the words CC Aging Proto number eight. Now what does CC mean? Well, collector's choice. Is this a collector's choice model that never happened? Because I've looked through them all and it's not there. If you've been following my videos, you'll know of where I've gotten this one. It's Dave's Guitar Shop. It seems Gibson is cleaning house of all old prototypes that they don't need. Dave's will list these things and then they quickly disappear, so you've gotta be quick. 
and they've been pretty good at advertising most of them correctly, but this is one that I think kind of slipped past them. Other ones that I've seen include prototype number one, Aging of the Ronnie Montrose Burst was CC Aging Proto number one. They've had number 17, which was the Dave Henson 59 DC Jr. And they also had number five, which was like a heavy aged R6. But this guitar is actually based off of a Japan exclusive model called the Kazuyoshi Saito Les Paul. I think that's why I fell in love with this model even more because Kazu Yoshi has like two video game references to it. Yoshi because Yoshi and Kazu kind of like Banjo Kazooie. There's not a lot of English information out there about this guy, but what I was able to translate was he basically made his debut with a hit single in 1993. And then he's written a bunch of different songs for commercials and pop artists. One of them that was mentioned was the band Puffy. At first, I was just going to leave that as a fun little fact, but then it hit me. I actually do know that band. They had a show on Cartoon Network called Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi Show, but he's worked with the actual band. That's crazy to me. Never heard of that show, you say? Well, how about Teen Titans? Puffy did the intro song for them. So those two bonus facts just make me love this guitar even more. And he's also been a TV actor as well as writing songs for TV shows and that. But to my knowledge, he's had this signature Les Paul, which I believe was in 2012, something around there. There's not a lot of information out there. Even if you have all the keywords and you're looking for this, all you're gonna find is my old video and a few old reverb listings. But their serial numbers just read K-A-Z and then their number out of 30. And then they also have K-S on the back of the headstock and their hard shell lift and reissue case also has his KS initials on it. He has what they called the KS330, and with a different company, he wrote a commercial for Pocky, so he has a Pocky guitar out there. And his other model was in 2018, the J35. So apparently, this guy has some sort of following or else Gibson wouldn't be giving him custom shop signature guitars. But what I notice about him, just in like what he's playing, he must have a really deep appreciation for historic Gibson models. Any guy who plays a vintage Dove and also owns a blue sparkle top deluxe from the 70s is okay in my book. And look at this model. It's the coolest mashup of all the 50s instruments. Now it's kind of interesting about this aged prototype is all they aged was like the hardware on it and we'll take a closer look on the workbench here but they did start to age it this thing's got this green thumb thing going on right here but it's like they started it and then they went nah we don't want to do that we'll just let it be and the production run of these guys they had heavy aged ones and apparently there were non-aged ones as well so is this a kazuyoshi saito les paul prototype i'm not sure were they going to reissue it in the collector's choice lineup for American release? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't have answers for you guys. I could just tell you what I know about this thing. But man, I am so happy to have finally gotten to try one of these. It is perfection. But let's go ahead, throw it on the workbench, take a look at its individual parts, and then get to our playing demo. Inside the gold top. Hey, we don't have too much to go over here. The pickup is a single P90 as we were talking about earlier. It just looks like a standard custom shop P90. Nothing too fancy in here. Don't see any stickers or anything either. But something that is a little bit interesting is it looks like it does have a route that continues on to where a neck pickup would be. So if you were to cut this top out, I think you might find some sort of pickup route under there. This is one of those times where I wish I had like an X-ray. But other than that, the route just continues on into here. I would guess this is built to historic specs with a long neck tenon, but there's really no way for me to know. But as the custom shop guitars do, they route them specifically for the height of the P90. Unlike the USA versions that'll use springs and sometimes foam blocks. Now you still can use those if you want it to get higher, but, but this is supposed to be the correct height. The back side of the cover reads UC452B. The pickup reads about 8K ohms on the meter. And here's kind of an interesting aging choice. They age the pull pieces, but not the screws. <laughs> kind of the same thing with the wrap tail piece studs here. They heavily aged this one. That's where the guy's hand would rest and kind of rust it away. Whereas this one's only lightly aged. The bridge is lightweight aluminum and looks like this on the back. And you adjust the intonation with these little screws. 
As far as the rest of the body goes, you can see some very minute finish check marks here and there. Like there appears to be like some sort of paint run right here, as well as like a small finish check. It's kind of interesting. I don't think it was really an aging thing. I think it's more accidental, just like the finish checks right here by the knobs. That's usually associated with the guitar being like dropped at some point in time. So you've got a little bit of finish checking there, no cracks within the wood. This knob actually has some internal cracking to it. So I mean, it's got a kind of an aged vibe to it. Here's what it's like without the pickguard. But the pickguard itself, it's, it's kind of cool. So it's not like a regular Les Paul style pickguard. It's more like a mirrored pickguard where it has the image that it's portraying on the back. You see how you can see it when you shine the light on it. But then it's like a clear plastic on top of that. So kind of a cool little feature borrowed from the ES-295. And they've done the same aging treatment on the screws here. Right there, right there, and super heavily aged bracket. So it's your traditional maple top with mahogany body, mahogany neck, and I absolutely adore this rosewood fretboard. Normally, I like a nice dark rosewood because it looks closer to ebony, but something about this one looks closer to the mahogany body. So you've got a continuation of this mahogany color with the gold, and then with the rosewood with the gold. It's just such a beautiful complement to this guitar. And we've got our trapezoid inlays here. Just such a beautiful fretboard. And it has the historic, very, very, very tiny fret nibs, like they almost don't even exist. And a nice rolled fret edge binding. The truss rod cover is your typical historic version. And we've got the Les Paul silk screen right here with the low Gibson logo. We get a 1.66 inch nut width, which increases to 2.05 at the 12th. First fret neck depth is a chunky 9.4. And it stays beefy at the 12th, 1.05. Moving on to the back here. Once again, I just absolutely love the wood grain on this body. I mean, it's just as beautiful as the fretboard. Not all mahogany looks quite like this, but inside the back control plate, it's kind of interesting. As we had talked about earlier, it's routed just like a regular Les Paul, but here you can see the wiring. You got your bumblebee cap with your 250 style pots, and they're running the grounding wire from within that cavity instead of like sometimes you'll see from here. And take some time to notice all the dull router bit evidence right here. It wasn't really quite cleaned up. It's very frisky for a custom shop. But they do have the plastic square output jack plate. But what's a, kind of an interesting feature here is stock Schaller strap buttons. Those are the ones I ultimately prefer. So that was a pretty cool bonus for me because they're also pre-aged. Production run Kazuyoshi Saito Les Pauls actually came with Dunlop strap locks. So that's a pretty notable difference. This also has the correct thin binding in the cutaway for being historic. But the most standout feature to this one as compared to all other single pickup guitars, I mean, this, this is just so beautiful. I love that this exists. Now, I don't think this is actually a full on access heel joint. It's just slightly sculpted despite what the COA says. Cause it's not quite as comfortable as my Rhino Les Paul, but it's definitely a little bit better. But that might just be because this is a huge 50s chunky rounded neck profile too that just makes it seem a little bit less useful as compared to a smaller neck. And here you can see the serial number of this one is just CC Aging Proto number 8. And they've also aged the Gibson Cluson Deluxe tuners. You can especially see it right here. I think that's probably what they aged the most on this guitar. This example weighs 8 pounds 4.2 ounces. Now that we know all about this instrument, it's time to plug it in and hear how she sounds.
my final thoughts on this thing. It's just perfection, guys. Sure, the access heel joint, I kind of wish it had a little bit of a deeper carve to it, as you still just barely hit a heel, but I mean, it's not uncomfortable to play any of these notes. But everything else about this, it's perfect. There really is something to single pickup guitars. And this guitar just has so many cool references to it. Between Cartoon Network shows and like weird commercials and, and the other works that Kazuyoshi's also done, but also within the Gibson world of being a mashup of all these 50s instruments. So that's when I tell you guys, yeah, I really don't want to sell this guitar. I'm plenty happy keeping this. I'll still list it on reverb for an insane price. And if somebody wants to pay me a huge premium for it, all right, I'm not gonna keep it hostage from anybody. But other than that, I have other plans for this one. But let's go ahead and take a look over its condition just for good measure. So the face of the headstock has kind of been given a VOS treatment where they kind of dulled the finish up a little bit. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here. And you might have some scratches from my string change, but I mean, honestly, not too much here. Just a full disclosure, the A string, the nut is cut just a little bit too short. So if you pick really hard, it kind of has a buzz to it. But once you fret a note, it's perfectly fine. Now we'll just, oh man, this, this fretboard. I know I've already Googled all over it before, but there's something special to this one. I mean, does this look like anything special to you guys? I know Brazilian is the rosewood everybody kind of awes over, but I don't think it's that, but it might be something else special. But I, I love the top carve to this one. I think that's what makes the gold top so beautiful and just having one pickup, it just really kind of pronounces that top carve to it. I'm not really a huge gold top fan, but it definitely works with the 295 reference as well. Backside of the headstock, I mean, there's not too much to go over it. It's just mainly a different view for this guitar for you guys. Huge rounded neck profile. It's not overly fat though. It's just fat enough that it's comfortable. I was kind of scared it might be too thick myself, but I found it very comfortable to play. And you've got a few light nicks and dings on the back already, but for the most part, clean shape. And we'll take a quick run around the edges here as well. Again, Schaller strap locks. I'm down with that. Let's go ahead and do the black light. Being a new guitar, yeah, it doesn't really glow too much, but it does a little bit. I, I doubt we'll find anything too interesting back here. Ooh. What's with this back plate? I've never seen one of those do that before. I thought the back of it looked a little bit goofy. Must have been trying some sort of different material on that. But yeah, everything's looking good here. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, do you see this? It's confirmed. Kazuyoshi Saito, it's, it's there. Did they, oh. <laughs> do you get it? I, I am speechless right now, guys. So that confirms everything I just said. I really wish I would have done this before. I gotta turn the lights on. If you guys thought I wasn't in love with this guitar before now, look, you can't see that. You can't see it until you turn the black light on. What is this? I don't understand why that's happening and why it would only show up under black light but it's there. I can't believe it. Wonder if this was like a leftover and they just rebranded it as a prototype. Yeah, that confirms everything for me. Well, I think you guys know what I want to do with this case now. We gotta blacklight the case. <laughs> because the original Kazuyoshi Saito cases had the KS on them. Fortunately, no, not cool enough to have the KS there. I guess that doesn't mean it wasn't there. They probably just wiped that off of there, if indeed it was. But I mean, there's tons of these Lifton cases out there. They probably just swapped it off. So it's your standard Lifton style reissue case. Two, three, four, and a fifth back latch there. And the interior, it's pink. It's the less historically correct version with the double neck rest and good heel support. And take a look at here. You've got your Gibson Gold warranty and it does have a COA. And as I was telling you earlier, it's labeled as a Les Paul Standard Access. So they erased Kazuyoshi's signature from this guitar. Those sneaky guys.
We also got a delicious snack here and a case key. I feel sorry for anybody who wants to buy this from me because that whole KS thing, that just jumped the price up another thousand bucks. This guitar, it's perfection. I love it. But thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.